mysteriously labeled Camp Century Sub-Ice that was lost in a freezer for decades. <laughs> Not that one. I need to put it in the other today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a muddy day. With the glycol, it's doing some good. And you see the people are very angry. They are not surrounded. It contains freeze-dried fossils of plants from a tundra ecosystem that used to live in Greenland when that ice sheet had melted away in the past. And we're trying to learn more about what that environment was like, what the climate conditions were like at that time, and use that information to understand how sensitive the Greenland ice sheet may be to melting under human-caused climate change in the future. This one is probably about 1,390 meters below the current surface of the Greenland ice sheet. We can see uh, little pebbles along with smaller uh, pieces of clay. So this had been covered up by ice for a very long time. And we're the first group of scientists to actually study this material. These Packages of soil, these cores, are like time capsules from the past. And when we look at them, we can figure out clues about what it used to be like, what types of plants were there, and how warm it may have been in the past, and how much smaller the Greenland ice sheet was. So by cracking open these sediments for the very first time, we're able to learn more about what it used to be like in the past. With this research, we are hoping to learn more about past times when this part of Greenland melted away, and then understand what climate was like at those times. How much warmer was it at that point? What was different about Earth's climate system at those times versus today? And how does that, what does that tell us about how sensitive Greenland is to melting in the future? The big question is, can the Greenland survive at a plus two degree warming? And what duration is necessary to, 
produce a partial or total melting of the Greenland. So for that, we have to look into the past. This is the melt layer. I know it might be difficult to see, but... Uh... All the meteorological measurements and atmospheric measurements humans have done in the last hundred years or so are already influenced by climate change that is human caused. So if we want to see the natural state of climate and natural variability, then we need to go way, way further back in time. And our archives provide this window into the past. My view is that the information we provide as scientists is sort of a manual. Of, this is how the Earth works. If you add too much carbon to the atmosphere, it's going to get too warm. You're going to melt the ice sheets. You're going to change weather patterns, and it's going to make life very difficult for us as humans. Or we can look towards a different path with less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and a future that is not as uh, uncertain and difficult for us. Thank you. 